Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hello and welcome to the vlog. We're on the build today. Um, so I thought I'd give you a bit of an update as to what's happening. I've also cut my hair this morning. What do you reckon to that? Look like a little bit of a peanut head, don't I? Anyway, you don't want to see me. Let's turn the camera around and I'll give you an update as to what's happening on the build here because we're quiet at the brewery. So I've got a couple of weeks in the new year to get as much done as possible on this project. So yesterday we had a plate compactor in and um, we've got concrete, uh, sorry, <laughs> not concrete, um, hardcore below this sand blinding and then the sand blinding on top and as you can see with our footprints not making much of an imprint on it um, it's all been compacted nice and firmly it's been over plenty of times in several directions I don't know why I didn't get any video for it it's because I was on my own I guess and I had to take the um, tool back to the hire company so I just wanted to get it done as quick as possible uh, so we did that yesterday we've also um, filled the bottom of the cavities so this stuff here is what they call cavity fill down the bottom and this supports the wall between the bottom of the concrete floor and the outside of the building so that these two cavities don't get crushed together over time with the loads coming from either side so this is just a weak mix as you can probably see there a weak mix of about five or six to one of ballast sand and cement I think I did uh, three ballast two sharp sand and one cement and then the foundations themselves are a three to one mix of building sand and cement. So they're solid, literally rock solid. And then this has all been filled 220 millile millimeters below finished floor level. Um, and then that gives you some drainage if there's anything that escapes the cavity tray below. And then you bench it forwards to the outer leaf. This is all taken off the architect's spec. Um, but those in the know will know. And then what we're doing now is cutting some insulation for the cold bridge that goes around the external wall and then inside where we, we've set this insulation upwards like that. And then inside we'll be having some of this 100 mil insulation go down underneath the concrete floor. So that will bring us up to sort of this height like that. So I have insulation below to the bottom of, imagine this is 100 mil thick. And then on top of that, this section here will pour concrete to the level of this block. And then this section prevents any cold bridging across from the external block across here into your concrete floor. So your concrete floor is basically insulated on the bottom and the sides from any external heat loss and uh, thermal transfer and of course then you've just got the heat in your house which will warm your concrete block up um, this is the retaining wall that we've been building as per the request from uh, building control this wasn't on the plan but the building control has asked us to do this and then he also wanted me to tank it somehow so we've painted all the back of it as you can see there with this stuff which was recommended so this is a DPM and it's suitable for um, suitable for waterproofing walls, above ground structures and foundations. If you have a look on the back as well, it does also say on the spec sheet that it's suitable damp proof course for um, foundations below ground, but it's obviously not on this tin, but it certainly said it on the... Um, on the spec sheet that I downloaded. So it's turning me into a liar, that. But it is all right, it's for the job. It's a liquid DPM. So three coats of that should be fine. And then we'll see what the inspector says. If he wants us to do something extra, we will. I can't see it being an issue though, because this ground, as you can see, is almost pure sand and stone underneath. And before I painted this wall, a few days ago, I washed the back of this wall off. So the application of the DPM 
was on clean um, block work rather than dusty and the water drained away within seconds but belt and braces at the bottom of there what we're going to be doing is installing this here perforated pipe as a land drain um, or a French drain as it's more commonly known these days because of its designer a Mr French of course it's not because they're popular in France so as you can see this pipe's perforated all the way along its length and all the way around as well and this will sit in the trench down here and come around this corner it'll sit in a bed of gravel along there and then any water that does collect will run through that perforated pipe come across here and then ultimately it will be connected up to our surface water soak away which we'll be digging in the middle of the garden there there is one already there but it's just filled with rubble and it's not very big at all so we're going to put a big one in and we've got some 20 mil clean gravel and everything to go over the top of uh, the French drain and then we're going to backfill it with all of this slightly dirtier gravel that we used when we graded off a load of sand that we excavated so clean gravel initially to make sure that obviously no soil blocks up the holes on the French drain on the perforated pipe and then we'll cover it with that stuff and then when we get up to next door's ground level we'll probably either maintain a gravel bed along the edge or uh, they might just come right up to the wall with whatever they want to put up there path stones I don't know when we get to um, just below finished floor level next door ground level next door we're going to have three courses of engineering bricks and they're going to come up in a double wall like a nine inch wall we'll probably back it up with concrete block and then three courses of brick on the front to make a nine inch wall and then on top of those I've ordered some plinth stretchers which are triangular shaped bricks and that will bring us in to a single block wall then to continue the build up and they're expensive nine uh, eight pounds fifty a brick and I need 52 of them to go along here yeah that's pricey isn't it but fortunately the money we've saved um, by opening an account an account with MKM uh, the money we've saved on the installation alone has almost paid for those plinth stretchers so I'll not tell you what we paid for these because I don't know if I'm allowed to but uh, it was around half price to what we should have been paying from the published book price so it saved us a lot of money on insulation and of course we've got more insulation to come up the cavity walls as well when we start building those so that's the stage we're at hello buddy we've not seen the dogs for ages Gem, have we I don't think where's Reg is he is he still in bed looks like it's time for a cup of tea you coming boy come on then bud they don't like it really because obviously it's some familiar ground to them both now you all right my buddy you all right reg yeah we've not done any dog walking videos for a bit have we mate hey good boys right so um i've got some more of this 25 mil insulation for the upstands to cut then once that's done we're going to cut all of the large sheets fit them in like a jigsaw and number the pieces um, and then take them all back out again and the reason we're going to do this is we've got all this damp proof membrane to go in underneath but we're not getting an inspection from the building inspector until I think five days Monday so it's five days from today so if we put that DPM down now and we had rain over the weekend then all of this insulation would be sat basically at the bottom of a pond because that's practically a pond liner so it's free draining as it is so we'll just get everything cut and then as soon as the building inspector says I'm coming at 10 we can start putting it all in or I might just show him what we're doing and then we'll put it in a few hours before the concrete arrives actually that'd probably be the best thing and then we're going to absolutely dodge the chance of filling the footings with water 
So uh, anyway, let's get cutting this insulation. I'm just going to put my glove on so I can run my finger down the edge of this foil without cutting it. Do you want to come this side, Jim? You'll get a better view of what I'm doing. <clears throat> so we want nine inch lengths. So I've got my finger set at nine inches, so you can see nine inches there on the edge. I'm going to take the edge of the tape measure and just run my finger down while scoring the foil all the way at nine inches. And if you follow that line that's already on the board, you can see the little green dashed line. You can see that I'm within a millimetre, a millimetre or two. And then we're just going to... Oh yeah, what a sound. bit of a wobble on there look speed wobble it's what you get when you go too fast there's another one so this where we're looking for this. around the front internal wall anyway. It will be, won't it? It kind of defeats the object, doesn't it? We want this to be out one. Uh, and we've just got this piece here, so this, yeah, this will do. The last two. Come out corner, look. They're not very good at um, things in walls and cameras. I think they're the new Samsung for phones that, that do that. not going to cut the last board down to nine inches what we'll do instead is we'll just place it on the wall because the wall where the sand runs in is not perfectly even you know where we've hit it with a whacker plate and whatever else so uh, <laughs> Reggie's just fell down there that is his foothold that he put Anyway, yeah, so it's because it's not perfectly even all the way around, although I've tried to make it such. What we're going to do instead is we're just going to lay these up against the wall and then I'm going to run along it with the handsaw. Like that. Yeah. And then we'll just cut against this, you know what I mean? And we'll trim it down to the height we need it to be at. But before I do that, to hold it in place, I might cut all the big boards first and drop them in, and then they'll kind of push it all up. So we'll hold them in place, won't we? Yeah, so it's not wobbly when we're cutting. So let's do that. Cut it. Reggie doesn't know what's going on, do you, bud? So uh, we've got all the insulation down, we've got a spare sheet of 25mm there, we didn't need that, but if he wants us to put any insulation stand up against the internal walls, we'll have enough there. And then we've just got a sliver here, and a sliver here, which we're short of, but I've got some 100mm at work that we use for the cold rooms, I've got some offcuts from the cold room doors. And it's all the same stuff. Kingspan Thermoboard. So we'll go and have a look for some of that and bring it back with us. Well, this is how far we've got, folks. Well, basically, we've got it all the way. So I'll be taking this back up um, over the weekend just to drop the D DPM underneath. But we did have enough. I've not done there. I've just spotted that. 
we need a little bit for there so that means there'll be a little bit required for where the back door's coming out and then on the back i realized we'd not done returns for the um for the back door and we're not sure whether we're going to put a normal back door in or french doors so i've knocked out well i was just going to knock three blocks out to have like a 1200 wide French door but it loosened two others so in fact I took the whole row out and then I chipped the concrete off the bottom and we're gonna with the cement sorry we're gonna bed them in again I think and uh, yeah we'll bed them in again and put the reveals in and then we'll stick we'll stick what's left of the insulation in there and then we've got insulation going all the way up to under the door to the front of the building and there's no cold spots then I can put I can put this little cold bridging bit all the way up to the door. So that's it. That's today's um little update. So you all know what we're on with. Let's have a look over here. Just make sure that it's all done and dusted as we wanted it to be. All benched in. Yeah, lovely. Well like I say, there we go. That's what's finished. So I guess I'll see you on the next video, which well, probably be tomorrow, if you're lucky. <laughs>